What's up guys? I'm Crystal Lee Naomi, aka Jasmine Borders on Tyler Perry's Sisters. Be sure to subscribe to the Haves and the Have Nots review for not only reviews on the Haves and the Have Nots, but also on Sisters. And while you're at it, give your girl a follow on Instagram at Crystal Lee Naomi. And I'll see you every Wednesday at night only on BET. Alright, Sisters fans, this is my episode review for season two, episode four, Trying to Stay Open, which aired on the 28th. Fatima and Zach meet each other after an unfortunate accident. Danny gets offended by something Preston says. Andy contemplates a settlement in a legal case. So before I go into my review, make sure you take a moment to give this video a thumbs up to show you like it. Hit that subscribe button. Click the bell notification icon and select all. That way you are allowing all notifications to come through when I post to the channel. And finally, follow me on social media. Links are in the description below. This particular episode, I do feel conflicted on several fronts where I do actually think I like it, but I feel like there are also portions. I feel like there's a yin and yang where there's a good portion of the episode I like, but I feel like there's just as much to dislike about it. So at the moment, I'm balancing on giving this episode a five. I'm not saying it was bad, but how about this? It's the beginning of the video. As of right now, I say the episode's a five. Let me break down the entire episode and maybe by the end I'll feel less conflicted about a score. So without further ado, let's jump into it. So Fatima and Zach, they're going back from the chain breakers meeting and uh, Zach's trying to be dropped off at the hotel. And when he name drops the hotel, Fatima's like, wait, wait, wait. You're over here riding a bike and you say you can afford to be at a hotel like this. Uh, I know some people. And, you know, she's just saying, hey, Zach, come on now. Don't get in any trouble because she she feels something is off about this scenario. They have an interesting back and forth. And again, I can't say it enough. But team of being bumped to a series regular and Preston, I like it. I like the uh, dynamic they bring to the show. And uh, long story short, you know, Zach is still mad about the whole situation with Karen and you know, it's like, oh, wow, you got a nice car. You must have a man, good man taking care of you. And then, you know, Fatima gets offended because she's taking care of herself. And she felt like it's a bit sexist that Zach would assume that it's a man who is paying for her to be able to have a car that's nice. That's the one she's driving. And then it gets to the point where, you know, her favorite songs on Zach wants her to cut it off. Again, you know, he calms down a little after you apologize. Like, so, uh, you seeing anybody? He's like, Fatima's like, no, 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 we ain't doing this. So they get to the hotel and, uh, he gets his bike out of the back. She gives him his number in case he needs anything. And she drives off. Zach goes upstairs and I believe there's room service bringing the rose and wine or champagne that Pam had sent to the hotel thinking that. Karen and Zach were going to be there together without knowing that it was Karen and Aaron. So when Zach meets up with the room service, like, no, no, no I could take it to him. But apparently, you know, hotel policy, Zach can't do it. It has to be the room service. So Zach, I think, puts his bike up or puts his uh, bag somewhere. And then he pretty much had, uh, you know, is sneaking or lurking around. He's pretty much pulling a Justin from the haves and the have nots. So room service knocks on the door. Aaron is all up in Karen in more ways than one. So they don't answer. So Zach actually goes ahead and, you know, takes like a pick or something and breaks into the hotel room, goes on, goes into a fight with um, Aaron until Karen breaks it up. Zach's yelling at her about her, you know, being with someone else and being with this guy. And then the fact that his wife shot herself in front of you and Aaron was about to go off. But Karen's breaking him up. And from there, room service comes back in, says that is there a problem here? What's going on? And he saw in the security footage that Zach broke into the um, hotel room. So he's under arrest and he's being pinned up against the wall and handcuffed. And I'm thinking to myself, um, I get that the dude was, room, uh, you know, room service. But was he also security or should he have called security? Because, I mean, I, I don't you know what? I'm not even going to overthink it. All we know, all we all we know is Zach is under arrest. So from there. Aaron is obviously heated because the room service dude who apparently is also security is like, hey, don't worry, we'll send somebody up to fix your door. Uh, Aaron is obviously upset. And I'm not saying I trust Aaron, but I can definitely side with him on this one that Zach was completely out of line. He deserved to have his ass whooped. 
And I mean, he was holding his, uh, you know, stomach the entire time because remember he had just been stabbed less than like 24 hours ago and he's still recovering from that. So Karen, you know, grabs a person, and everything. And he was like, wait, wait, where are you going? I, I need you to stay with me. He's like, no, 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 I need to go. And it's like, what are you going to bail him out? No, that's none of your business. So then Karen just leaves. And then, you know, Aaron again is obviously pissed off for good reason. So after that, Sabrina gives Andy a pep talk because at this point, it's the next morning. Andy doesn't want to get out of bed. I know somebody tweeted, I was like, wait, so Andy wakes up with full makeup on? That was funny, but she looked adorable. Now, this, like the Zach going off on Karen thing. <sighs> Andy goes on this pity party about how she hates men. She wants to be loved and give love. And, you know, she just wants to stay in bed. Kind of like last week. I don't have a problem with the things that Andy says, but I don't think that she should be the one saying them. Because she's playing the victim card when she literally messed around with a married man. So basically, with your experience with a married man, who you knew was married, because that went south, suddenly all men deserve your hatred all men deserve to be labeled as the reason why you can't find happiness i have a massive problem with that and i know you're probably thinking well jeremy you're a guy it has nothing to do with that if you watch my bro reviews which is the male counterpart of sisters i call out characters like mike and bill who are obviously selfish assholes who ruin the lives of women so don't think i'm sexist when i make those kind of comments so Yes, I think Andy is completely in the wrong. But basically, Sabrina, who is probably my favorite of the main four, gives her a pep talk about how she's a fighter. You're going to get out of this bed. You're going to get dressed. You're going to go back to that law firm and get your job back. I mean, your career back. But Andy has no money or clothes. Sabrina allows her to use some clothes. And is like, hey, uh, here's a car uh, card. Uh, Sabrina, for what I need, I want to need more than this card. I'm just like, this reminds me of the Jim and David dynamic when Jim needed money and David would give him like his credit cards or whatever. So, and I'm thinking to myself, I wanted Sabrina to say something smart though. When Andy was like, I want to stay here in this bed. I wish Sabrina would have said, well, put it this way. I can't go into work anymore. Remember they sent me home. So unless things get figured out between you, Gary, the FBI and this money, then I'm going to be out of job. And in that case, you won't even have this bed to sleep in or me to have an apartment to be in. So you're going to get your butt up, take one of my dresses and get your job back. So from there, she tells Andy that, you know, the bank called her in to talk about the whole money situation. So I did like the line is like, look, if I can go into my job because the FBI must talk to me about a law degree, you can certainly go back into your job and see what you can do about getting your uh, career back at the law firm. I did like that. All right. So after that, I feel like, okay, we got the Preston and Danny scene, and my God, I just feel like we're getting one scene after the next where the scenes are good, but there's just as much to piss me off. Preston handcuffs Danny in a cute scene. Just because of the fact at this point, correct me if I'm wrong, Danny has done the same thing to Preston at least two to three times. So he's having fun with the role reversal because, again, he's typically the one that's being handcuffed. He needs to go to work. She doesn't want him to leave. And he even takes like, hey, I even brought you a pot to piss in because of the fact that, you know, Danny would probably say something like that. And then it's like he calls her gal and then she's like all serious. Hey, un un look, take these handcuffs off. And then he gets it. Like, OK, fine. I'm sorry. It's like, look, you come from that racist family. So what is this? A racist thing? You got me all chained up. I'm naked. You calling me gal and give me a pot to piss in. I don't play. The, I ain't the one. So she goes off. You got what? You got the stupid hat on. Preston honestly is apologetic because of the fact is like he even tries to calm her down. It's like, look, tell me what I did wrong. What's happening right now? And Danny, I feel like. I was really liking Danny this season because I thought they were really going somewhere good with her character, given the fact that her relationship seems to be the most stable out of the four. But at the same time, I feel like they're taking Danny's self-destructive tendency. And when I say self-destructive, I mean, she typically uh, self-sabotage. Basically, she sabotages her own relationships based off her own demeanor, thoughts and whatnot. So what I'm saying is. She's and this is a problem with a lot of women in this show. And I mean, if you watch Bruh, which Andy is on, I want to say that for that review, because I that's one of my favorite episodes. And 
women and i don't want to make this a blanket statement to say all women so when i say women i'm talking about the women in this show just to put that in perspective i don't like it when women they only see things from their perspective it's like you didn't try to see things from preston's perspective because danny you've handcuffed him a couple of times at this point how do you think he felt when he got is it only something that's allowed when you do it so he can't do that and with the whole racist thing i feel like you're pushing him away even further because at this point i don't believe preston has done anything racist to danny and when you're just throwing up his racist family who he has yet to introduce you to in his face then i can see why he walked out on you the way he did so even after preston tried to understand and apologize even though i honestly don't see where he did anything wrong because danny's done the same thing to him twice at this point he just up and left. So then Danny comes out of the bathroom, notices, notices he's gone, and now she's mad. Then we get to the fourth scene that pissed me off. Karen's asleep at the salon. Pam walks in, basically apologizes because she realized, oh my goodness, that champagne, champagne and wine, I mean the champagne and flowers, I thought that it was you and Zach together, not you and Aaron. And because of that indirect, I'm not saying it's Pam's fault. She is, she was super nosy. But at the same time, I'm not going to blame her for Zach's bad decisions. Just I'm just throwing it out there. I'm not saying that she's wrong for being nosy and intrusive, but she had the right intentions. But Zach was the one that chose to go to the hotel. Zach was the one who decided to break into the hotel room. Zach was the one who broke into the hotel room, started breaking shit, fighting Aaron, and then got arrested. So no, I'm not going to blame Pam, but I don't like the fact that she was nosy. So then, you know, Sabrina tells, I mean, uh, excuse me, uh, Karen says, hey, I'm going to get ready. You need to get to work. I need to get cleaned up so we can get this line open up. So then we move on to the next scene. Uh, Calvin's down at the uh, club trying to get things ready for the drag show in honor for his father that passed away. And also it was like the fundraiser for Maurice. And um, one of the guys there is trying to, you know, just see if Calvin's OK. And obviously he doesn't want to talk about it. Sabrina comes in looking all cute. And, you know, she's allowed to talk with Calvin about the situation. And, um, you know, obviously his other father isn't taking it too well. Pretty much kind of shut him out at this point because, you know, he's trying to cope with things um, himself. And uh, Sabrina's on her way to work because she hasn't told Maurice who comes in in a second. Maurice and Calvin about the situation, but she's about to go to work. Just wanted to check in with Calvin to see if he's okay. Um, Maurice comes in. He's alive and well. It's like, we can celebrate a bitch. And it's like, look, we need... We need all these exotic things like these flowers. I need more blooms, more banners. Maurice, I mean, there's nothing else to say in the scene. Maurice was in full effect. And it's Maurice. It's, what do you say? He's like, well, hey, um, are you talking about all this stuff you want to add on? Why don't you help decorate? Look, hey, 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 I ain't. How are they looking for me to uh, decorate for my own celebrate? Maurice is a fool. <laughs> He's a damn fool. So we get to Hayden going in to see Gary, pretty much trying to get evidence on the situation. Like, hey, um basically the people working against you have a lot of condemn condemning evidence and information i need basically break down the whole story because we need everything we can get in order to help you out because things aren't looking too good so gary is about to be helpful until hayden brings up the fact that you know andy is impressive you know i was able to see it up close uh well what do you mean by that uh, we work in the same firm together, but I've never had time. I've never spent time with her until last night when we were working on your case. Wait, you were with her last night doing what? Talking about you. How long were you with her? And then Hayden pretty much senses that this is going in the wrong direction. And at that point, Gary just sticks his nose up at him. And that's pretty much it. This reminds me of last season when Ben played by the same actor who portrays Tom on bruh came over to the hospital after Jasmine was thrown off the, uh, a parking garage and Andy was asking Ben to help out uh, Gary and Gary just got all jealous so at that point he didn't give a damn about going to jail he just didn't even want to get the help that he needed so moving on we have uh, Officer Rhea seeing Zach locked up in jail and he has $5,000 cash bail now I was seeing some people comment it's like $5,000 $5,000 I thought it would be like five hundred. Look, I don't know the jail system, but damn, 5000 that is a lot. So he's mad because he's not able to go to work. And uh, he has Fatima's phone number because, uh, you know, she allows him to use. Well, she allows him to use her phone. Obviously, she's the one dialing the number. 
calls Fatima basically the fact that, hey, I need $5,000 because she's at work right now. And it's like, can you call Chris? Like, hey, uh, no, you might not want to do that when it comes to chain breakers. You know, second offenses, that's kind of like a, a, you know, a deal breaker. So she says she tried to help him out eventually, but she hangs up the phone. And at that point, you know, Rhea is like, you know, I could help you get out of here. What you going to get? Oh, actually, sorry. She says that in the promo. So she pretty much mocks him and walks off and Zach's all pissed. So Hayden comes back to the office, says that I can't tell you what happened between me and Gary, but I don't like him. <laughs> so then Fatima gets a package and she opens the box, sees it's full of money. She almost has a heart attack. And is like, no, no, it's uh, it's nothing. Don't worry about it. So Hayden goes to the back. Yeah, Andy shows up and, you know, has a little bit of an exchange with uh, Hayden before he goes to his office again. And, um... Fatima tells her about the box of money from Gary because I believe that Gary had told Hayden in jail that uh, his business manager was working on something that could help Andy out because of the fact that she had lost everything due to the being mixed up with him. And um, <laughs> Fatima's like, girl, are you sure you don't want it? You sure you don't want what's inside this box? And then when she sees the money, she's like, no, no, I'll take it. Fatima watches money. Don't touch it. It's like, damn. OK, girl, I got you. And then um, she calls Bellamy and pretty much says that Andy wants to see him. She goes to the back and um, pretty intense scene. So at this point, number one, people are in the Facebook group going, what kind of woman wears a dress with a slit that high <laughs> to a law firm? I'm like, y'all, you, you guys cracked me up. I love the, I love the sisters Facebook group. Y'all legitimately cracked me up something fierce. But remember, this is Sabrina's dress. And uh, basically her exchange with Bellamy is the fact that, look, I know this was a setup between you, Morris and Jasmine. Tell me, is Gary innocent? Was I the scapegoat? What What's going on here so we can just straighten things out? Bellamy pretty much breaks it down that, hey, hey let's just set you up a million dollar settlement. Like, wait, wait, a million dollar settlement? And then she also tries to see if Gary is innocent. And he, do, he and she even says, like, look, I know you're smart enough not to incriminate yourself, but come on now. Is he innocent or not? And Bellamy dances around the question, but Andy gets exactly what she needs to the point where she just leaves the office. Bellamy goes after her and he almost trips when he does. And we have Andy rushing off to a board meeting. And then we have Bellamy going to Fatima saying he's going to need security. So... Andy goes up to one of the older bosses that she, I guess one of the chair members. And I know Hayden was in the room and another person and pretty much explains that Bellamy was trying to tell me to take a settlement in order to stay quiet. And, um, you know, Bellamy denies it. Oh yeah. It's an, extreme, it's an affirmative action loss group, uh, lawsuit, you know, racial discrimination and whatnot. And she has the recording plays a few seconds of it. Bellamy is red in the face, but the, um, one of the heads are like, no, 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 no. Let's play the whole thing. And I'll tell you what, young lady, have a seat. Are you telling me that the evidence that you had was compensated by the FBI? Yes, it was a file folder in my apartment and on my bed. It was taken. And if you get that evidence, it will literally explain everything about the setup. And I don't know for sure if it will free Gary, but if we do, do some digging, it might actually do so. And at this point, Bellamy is told to have a few days off. Hayden will work with Andy on this case, and if everything turns out to be exactly what Andy's saying, then he will contact her. So, at the moment, it looks like Andy is ahead, and when she heads out, she actually gets to Fatima and breaks down, and that's the end of the episode. A lot of people are calling out Andy on Twitter for leaving that recording device there because of the fact that that's solid evidence, and she really shouldn't trust these people. To be honest, I can't fault her I honestly see both sides of the situation because of the fact that there's no guarantee that the people in that room, Hayden, no, we know Bellamy, the older guy, and then the other random guy at the table. We don't know if there's like a men's club, if you will, where, oh, who cares about this recording? They could deny it if they wanted to. Also, given the fact that uh, she literally told him what evidence and that was confiscated by the FBI could be used to clear her name. So who's to say that deals won't be made under the table that would take the evidence that Leslie gave Andy, get rid of it. That way, Andy has nothing. 
But on the flip side, let's say her leaving the recorder makes no difference. They'll actually do exactly what they said they would do and try to help her out. I don't think that Andy should be focused on saving Gary because of the fact that she needs to clear her own name first. And then from there, if th what's done in the dark will come to the light. And if Gary really is innocent, then it should it will be revealed eventually. But Andy needs to try to save Andy first before she can, uh, as the Bible says, you know, get the speck out of her own eye before she tries to get the speck out of his eye. So going back to what I was saying about this episode, you know, kind of pissing me off in more ways than one. The Zach regression. I praised last week because even though it was annoying, I'm glad that Zach kind of had his blowing his gasket scene and realized that Karen moved on and went to Aaron. Okay. But why the hell would he go to the hotel and attack them and then, of course, get arrested? So that was just a major regression on that front. Then you have, like I mentioned earlier, the whole Sabrina Andy thing where I don't mind them talking about their issues and whatnot. But Andy just pointing the finger at men when she was the one that effed up. I don't like it. Then you have Danny's demeanor towards Preston where it's just not fair because you're literally throwing his family's, I guess you could say, sins or persona on him when he's done nothing to reflect racist, racial behavior, racist behavior. Karen just not knowing what she wants or who she wants. I mean, I can't fault her for that. I mean, she's the one who left Aaron, but yeah, she didn't bail out Zach. And she obviously need to be alone because she is upset. So I can't, I'm not going to sit up here and say that I'm mad at Karen. I, I'm not. I feel like I'm more angry at Zach than her, Aaron, in this situation. And, uh, well, Gary is just a jealous prick. So Gary is pretty consistent. Fatima, I love her. One of my favorite characters. And, uh, yeah, Andy was pretty badass. I will admit, Andy, pretty badass. But I do feel like her concern about Gary will lead to more trouble in the future. So overall, five out of ten uh, i'll give it a seven yeah now that i talked about the episode out loud i'll give it a seven out of ten i thought this was a pretty solid episode and uh with that being said let me know your thoughts in the comment section below oh let's go back a bit the scene where you know a uh, andy wasn't against taking the two hundred fifty thousand dollars i don't know that might actually blow up in her face because remember last season after the whole suspension thing um I think Fatima came to her apartment with a cart saying that these were the things from your office, but then it was actually Gary in the cart. And then Gary had apparently paid her. And, um, I think at that point, Gary was trying to give her a hundred thousand dollars or something like that, but she refused to take a single dollar of it. So by her taking this $250,000, Ooh, this might not be good. But then again, we do know in the next episode, Andy is going to meet with Gary. So it is possible that the $250,000 will be brought up. So we'll have to wait and see. But with that being said, folks, thanks so much for tuning in. I appreciate the support on my videos as always. And what were your thoughts on the episode? Do you think a 7 out of 10 was too low? Do you agree with the scenes I didn't really like too much? Again, the acting was on point. I just don't like how the characters are acting, if that makes sense. Like the actors great job the characters i don't like how they're acting because i feel like there's a bit too much you know back and forth with the progression and regression of the characters like zach like i said last week he went off realized karen had moved on went to chain breakers he's trying to figure things out but now he's taking a major backslide so with that being said leave your thoughts in the comment section below who do you think zach's going to end up with seems like he has a you know a, an attraction to Fatima, but then the officer also seems to like have a thing for Zach. And uh, I don't know, we'll have to wait and see. But feel free to subscribe and donate. If you would like to donate to the channel, feel free to hit me up on PayPal, Cash App, or join Patreon for as little as $1 a month.